don't get more cool and interesting than our guest for the next hour. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please make some noise and welcome to the stage, Rachel Smith. Come here, you. And the jacket comes off. Oh, boy. How the devil are you, Rachel? Take a seat, take a seat. And I've also treated you as well, because, uh, yes, we've got white wine. We've got your wine. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. You can either have that on the stand or you can hold it in. Yeah, do, do what you want to do with that. I'll just hold it. I okay. can't believe you've actually got me wine. I have got That's your wine. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was ridiculous, by the way, making Why? me... Making me come on like that. I don't like care. Like I'm Kasabian or something. No, listen, um, I, I want to know what kind of mood you're in, to be honest. Are you uh, nice and polite, or are you giggly, or are you, what was it, precocious, like you described yourself this morning? I think I'm in a bit of a precocious mood, yeah. Keep drinking. Okay. Excellent <laughs> stuff, that's how we like it. Um, first and foremost, I want to kind of get a, a sense of uh, the people in the room as well, and to get a sense of... Uh, uh, where you know Rachel's work from. Uh, any uh, fans of, uh, let's go with, uh, Fight in Your Power? Is it, it, it's, uh, stand in Your stand Power. Stand in Your Power. Yeah, get, you get that right. Stand in Your Power fans? No. No? Okay. No. Uh. Any flimsy <laughs> fans in? Flimsy fans. Oh, flimsy. Oh, yes. <laughs> Anybody who has been reading quarantine comics over the course of the pandemic? Anyone who's been a quarantine comics fan? Yes, we've got people who have been raising their hands. Because that has been uh, a gift. Um, I know it's a strange thing to say throughout the course of pandemic and the effects that it's had on lives and um, society and it's really impacted at a deep core level. But it has been a gift to have that in our timeline. Um, so I think that's something we're definitely going to be talking on. We're going to be talking about autobiographical comics as well and how to, you know, build present all of that, the bearing of the soul on the page. But as there's one or two people perhaps that aren't aware of your earlier stuff and the earlier work, let's start with a little bit of a brief history of Rachel Smith. Um, getting into comics and getting into cartooning, how did that all start? Um, okay, a Rachel 101. A Rachel 101, <laughs> yeah. Um, a cliff notes, go for it. Okay, um, so I've always drawn ever since I was old enough to hold a pencil. Um, and then I, when I was a little bit older, I always loved um, writing stories. So comics was kind of the, the lovely marriage of those two things. Um, and that was kind of, uh, yeah, where I found my uh, reason to, to be alive. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of autobio comics. Um, so Wired Up Wrong was my first kind of foray into that about uh, how I feel about my brain and how it doesn't really work. How, how long ago was that? That's... Ooh, that was 2015, <laughs> 16, I want to say. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so that was about kind of my mental health and kind of... Uh, uh, making jokes about that and then I did uh, Stand in Your Power which was about going through a breakup uh, which um, yeah quite people found quite relatable um, but yeah it's still about mental health issues they're, they're both very funny by the way I've, I've made them sound really bleak and horrible but yeah they're, they're, <laughs> they're funny they're comedy books um, and yeah I, that's how I kind of cut my teeth on comics, to kind of writing about myself. I do make up stories as well, but I, I guess I'm, I'm more known for my autobio stuff, but yeah. <laughs> and um, I think the thing that people very much take away from the, the strips that you've done, even from the, 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 those, that first book, um, it is that kind of relatability. It's, it's you being very forthright about your mental health and your mental state, um, which kind of then begs the question, where are you at the moment? Considering that, um, it has been a, a rough year for uh, ourselves and yourself and everybody, um, but you've come out of Quarantine Comics with a book and uh, awards, which I was very happy to present with you down at uh, the Cartoon Museum. So there's that kind of kind of dichotomy of the whole thing. So how are you feeling at the moment? How are you? 
it's an odd thing. <laughs> um, it's odd to make content out of such a horrible time. Um, but I, I, I started making the comics. I didn't think they were going to be a book. I just did them so that I had something to do. I, uh, it was just a reason to get up in the morning, to be honest. Because, I mean, you started Quarantine Comics literally the moment, I'd say, lockdown kicked in. It was that first week. It was... Yeah, nearest, I started nearest, them it, on it? the 21st of March, yeah. 2020. Um, I remember that because it's the day before my birthday. Uh, and, uh, yeah, my I think boyfriend... Like piling on. <laughs> my boyfriend wasn't able to come and see me because all the news outlets were saying, don't travel and don't... Yeah, so... That was uh, a, a tough day, so I, I made a comic about it, and yeah, it just went from there. And I, like, I, yeah, as I say, I, I didn't think these comics were ever going to be in a book. It was my agent who was like, these are doing really well online, we should maybe think about putting them in a book. And then he found me Icon Books, and they published it, and yeah, it's done, done really well. You were talking about the book ending there, of the, uh, the, the getting the book published and the, the start of it. Let's let go back to the, the start of it then. And like you say, it was something that you did pretty much from the word go when it came to the pandemic. But what made you decide to do it as a daily um, strip? Because even, so like just for a couple of weeks, that's a, a, a wild undertaking to, to kind of like approach. What was the moment when you just went, okay, let's do this daily, let's, let's crack on? Well, when I, I, mean, I talk about this in the book, but yeah, when, when the lockdown started, I just felt really useless and like I, um, yeah, I, I was very depressed and, and very worried about the world. And it was my friend Heather who came around and said, well, Rachel, if you're good at anything, you're good at making comics that make people feel less alone. And maybe that's what people need right now more than ever. So I thought, well, yeah, this is my skill set. I'll start making comics um, about what I'm feeling. And yeah. Uh. <laughs> was, was there a, uh, an idea as well? Because like you say, it's something to keep you occupied, as it were. But there was, it also turned into a bit of a revenue stream as well. This is where I feel really bad about myself uh, for two reasons. Number one, for kind of showing, having the opportunity to show off, because uh, I actually have bought a number of the originals before everyone wanted one. So I managed to get about five from the early run. And I was going to show them, and this is the, the second part why I feel bad, because I haven't brought them. I was going to show them, because they turned into a, a revenue stream for you to sell these strips as uh, you went through. You don't have them on you. I don't. I can't like believe a, you don't carry around my comics <coughs> on your person at all times. It's, what kind no, of fan are you? Um, <laughs> um, no, so I used, to <laughs> I used to sell the originals. And I used to sell them for £10. And then Leonard shouted at me saying I should sell them for more. And I, so I, then I sold them for £15. I, just, I, wanted to, I wanted to keep it quite low so that anyone could buy them. I wanted to keep it very... Like, I didn't want to be, I don't know, I just... At which point, everybody was, had their notifications turned on for when uh, Rachel posted, because they instantly went onto the Etsy site, and next thing you know, everyone was clicking on and they sold out. It was just, it turned into a bit of a manic thing at the back end, it got, didn't it? Yeah, it got to the point where I was, like, posting them, and, uh, like, literally 30 seconds afterwards, they would <laughs> sell the original. Um, but I did do some prints as well, so... Yeah. I mean, just to talk about your, um, the, the, certainly the process of uh, your cartooning, and um, it's a, the, the Quantine Comics is a good example of that. There's no, you're not digital. Um, you're very kind of, you're very old school, and it is a case of your blue pencil to, to map out the, the panels, and then straight with a, a marker on, on the top. Um, it's something that's, served you very well from uh, day one. Is, is that part of the DIY aesthetic for your own um, process, or is it something that you just... Because, I mean, the, the book must mean that you can't afford an iPad now at some point, surely. <laughs> it's not that... <laughs> <laughs> I just... I really love working with a brush pen on 
some nice Bristol board. That's it for me. I love it. So, um, so for the people in the room for more technique, um, what is, what's the tools and what's the bits and pieces um, you use? I use a blue Colorase pencil to kind of do the pencils of my work. And then I ink over that with, I'm going to absolutely butcher this uh, pronunciation, with a, um, a black Kuretake Fude Gokochi brush pen, um, which I believe is a medium. Uh, so when we post yeah. this video online, we'll <laughs> stick subtitles on so <laughs> people know what that, that pen oh is. Gosh. And then I and then I scan it in and I colour on Photoshop. But yeah, the quarantine comics were all black and white, so they were just oh no, no not all of them. Some of them were coloured actually. What made you decide to do the weekly prints then? What was that um, decision process? Because I had a bit more time at the weekend, so yeah, I, every um, I would do a comic every day, and then at the week. The weekend, like on a, um, a Saturday, I would do like a, a full colour um, sort of splash page. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wanted to, I kind of realised I was getting a bit of an audience. So I kind of wanted to show off. <laughs> that's, it. <laughs> that's it. I wanted to show off. When did that start kicking in? When, for yourself, when did you start? realizing just how much of an audience you were getting for quarantine comics about a week in because no one had really, anything really, to straight do in. no one was doing well, there anything. is that i mean so yeah okay we had we had a lot things. of time on our hands <laughs> they they had nothing to do but look at my comics <laughs> i don't think it was sheer desperation that it took us on line online to look at quarantine comics quite frankly um i mean yeah that that's unfair i did have a, a an audience before then um, but yeah, I, I made a lot more of an audience since um, starting Quarantine Comics. Fair enough. And when it came to the cast list as well, because obviously it's you, it's, um, there was Rob in there uh, at a distance, there was your, uh, your housemate. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have the two animals. You've got Blackie and you've got, I can never remember. I've got Barky. Parky. And yep, Friendly. Barky. Yep. Um, where did they come from? Uh, mm -hmm. And when, I mean, yeah, but, uh, let's talk about the cast list of uh, Quarantine Comics. Well, ba uh, so Barky is this big black dog that follows me around. I think it's Churchill that kind of coined the phrase, like, big black dog, meaning depression. But, yeah, I just started drawing my depression as this big black dog. And he's, he gets bigger and smaller depending on how well I'm doing or how, yeah, how badly I'm doing. Um, and then it was in my book, Stand in Your Power, I um, kind of introduced uh, Friendly, his kind of uh, counterpart, which, uh, so Barky represents my depression, Friendly represents um, my kind of common sense and my friends loving me and, and um, yeah, things like that. So they, they both get bigger and smaller depending on how well I'm doing and that's kind of a good it's a good shorthand in the comics to kind of... So I don't have to say, like, I'm not doing very well in this comic. I can just have the dogs in the background being big or small and things like that. Um, yeah. Although some people have said they don't look like dogs, they look like cats. I know, they're just kind it's, of... It's, it's, they're kind of just animals. Yeah, <laughs> that, very much so. There's, you can't really determine between the two. Hmm. Um, I think the thing that really struck me as well... Um, while, yes, you, you talk about um, the, the, the animals growing in size um, in regards to your own mental health, and one is almost a negative uh, connotation, one is a positive, but there's some mo strips in there where it, both of them um, kind of play against that type. So you kind of, you, you very much, it's not an oppressive relationship of these uh, animals, and it's very much a case of you learn from them, uh, from both your negative and your positive aspects as represented by the dogs. And I think that's, oh, by the animals. And that's a really strong um, image, uh, a really strong uh, uh, aspect of the, the comic. I mean, yeah, where did that come from? Where's, where's talk, if you can talk about that. Um, I mean, depression is a complicated thing. It's... Um 
so sometimes I draw Barky as like this really lovely fluffy thing that I can just bury my head in and it's really nice and and uh, yeah it's, um, he can be a bit of a bully on occasion yeah but he's also really kind of comforting because I know where I'm at with him um, whereas friendly is also like she kind of tells me off a lot like you shouldn't be doing that what are you doing you should be drinking more water you should be uh, doing ring fit, you should be doing this, you know that that's going to make you feel better. So sometimes Barky is familiar and um, it, it's. I wanted to kind of represent that very complicated relationship with, with the dark part of myself and the light part of myself. Because um, I, I think people simplify depression quite a lot and it's not always that simple. Sometimes... It's very comforting to to rest in a fluffy barky. <laughs> um, so I tried to get that across. I hope I hope I did. <laughs> um, I think I've asked this question um, in an interview before with you, um, but I refused to answer. You, you, no, you didn't refuse to answer <laughs> it. But I'm going to try it again anyway. Uh, but the question that I asked um, was very much about the reaction to a published book uh, and how that then um, affected your own uh, depression, positivity, your own mental health, off the back of the success of the book, of how a book had been received once it was out in the world. Quarantine comics, it was daily. You were constantly getting an, an idea, and a, an affirmation of how those strips were going. How did that affect and feed then back into quarantine comics? Or did you feel that you wanted to try and maintain almost like a, a steady through line of the strip itself. Do, 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 you know, do you know what I mean? The tone of it. Because clearly it had an audience and it was a, an audience that was being very positive and feeding that positivity to you. How did you think that then affected Quarantine Comics as it continued? Um... So, you mean like... Uh, kind of like that Hall of Mirrors kind of thing, how, it, if it, the, how the reception of the comic was feeding the comic itself and how it was barreling on. I don't think it changed the comics, no. I, I kept it very much how I was feeling at the time. Uh, uh, it, just because I, I wasn't even able to go and meet the people that liked the comics. I, I was very much in my house with my housemate and my cat. So the comics uh, were just about that. I didn't... Um, yeah. How, how much I, interaction did you have with the uh, comments? Did you really dive into and reading all of the comments? Or did you just kind of, okay, I put the, the work out into the world. Let's, let's leave it alone. Let's leave it there. I read them a little bit. I read them and I know okay. that's not that's not really the rule, is it? You're meant to either read them all or not at all, but I, I read them a little bit. And then, yeah. <laughs> and what was yeah, what was your reaction to that? What was Oh, they were very positive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> very um, positive. I'm very grateful for my followers. They're nice. <laughs> nice um, in terms of the uh, well, let's talk about a slightly the, the broader topic of autobiographical comics. What is it about the autobiographical that really draws you as a to, for a co for the comics medium? Why does it lend so strongly? Certainly for your work as well. It's just always been a good way for me to express myself. Um, I I can't think of another way that. I, it, it would be so easy to just tell people what I was feeling and what I was doing. Um, yeah, so my autobio comic started, um, gosh, uh, in my early 20s when I saw a therapist for the first time. Um, and I said, well, maybe I could use my, my art to kind of... Uh, help myself be more positive. So I started um, a website called uh, One Good Thing. It was on Blogspot. That's how old I am. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, I would just make a comic every day about something good that happened to me. 
And that could be anything from seeing my friend for a drink and having a nice time, or sometimes it, <laughs> you could tell when I was struggling because I was like, I saw a nice footprint today in the snow and like, it was really really trying to find positive things but but I found it I found a positive thing every day and I drew about it and um yeah that was kind of where I uh became a little bit fascinated with autobio comics um it was also um reading Emmy Lennox as well um she well that, that was going to be my next question yeah. because uh, I mean certainly whoever's read your books know you've got this great um, sense of pacing throughout your, the, the strips that you do. Who was it that you were reading? Who did you draw as influence? Emmy Lennox was a, a yeah. huge, yeah, absolutely huge um, influence. Um, Kate Beaton as well, um, does a lot of autobio stuff. Uh, she's great. Uh, Kate Leth um, does a lot of autobio stuff. They're just, um, yeah, I just kind of, I read their stuff and I was just like, they're so brave to put themselves out there and 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 speak their kind of truth. And I just thought maybe I can do that too and maybe it will help people that are feeling like me. <laughs> so. Um, so those books that you have read and those people that have influenced you... Um, have they become contemporaries? Have they become friends of yours? Have you communicated to them? Because do you, I, I, do you recognise how you have entered the, that group? And I'm not going to say pantheon because it sounds incredibly pretentious, but that group of um, autobiographical cartoonists, you're no longer a somebody who is following along from their footsteps. You are part of that very strong group now. I am very happy to say that I am friends with all three of those women that I just said. Um, so yeah, I'm friends with Emmy and Kate and, and, um, and other Kate. But yeah, I, I, I'm getting there. You keep convincing me that I'm quite famous and it's weird. I think, I think well, I mean, weird. I think the, the Etsy sales alone should give you an idea of how well you did and how uh, received you are. Um, something that we've um, all been missing and we've been hearing about this all morning um, and all day, uh, regarding the absence of Comic Cons, absence of connection, and uh, finally getting the chance to see each other again at uh, an event such as this. Um, how much have you missed it? Uh, how, much, how much did you miss the connection uh, with other people? I mean, Rob's one thing. Making that connection with Rob again was one thing. But how about making connection with uh, other people and other, other creators? Um, it's been amazing yeah. <laughs> coming back. I just, yeah, I'd, it's one thing just making comics in your studio or on your own in your house. And it's, I kind of forget that there's people reading them. <laughs> like, there's actual people reading these comics and having feelings about them. And it's been so nice to just talk to them about it and having that kind of sounds weird but like instant gratification like here's my comic and they read it and they're like this is great and I'm like oh great like you f you don't you you lose that if you don't go to comic cons or people you know coming over saying I I have this book of yours and I loved it and I'd love you to sign it and it's like yeah well, that's of course I will that's amazing and and just I just I forget that there's people reading my stuff Sometimes. <laughs> How many have come up to your table who have been, I mean, you've got, we've kind of demonstrated that with a bit of a uh, show of hands today. People who have discovered your stuff, uh, your work through Quarantine Comics. How many people have then come to the table and gone, ah, hello, what's all this stuff? Um, let's find out more about this. Let's. Yeah, I've had a lot of people going, oh, Quarantine Comics. Oh, also these things. Like, <laughs> it's really nice. Um, yeah, Quarantine Comics has really uh, put me on a, another level of being searchable, I yeah. guess, on Google or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's, that's been amazing to talk to those people. It, it must be particularly strange to have this ongoing project that you did day by day suddenly become this um, one item which then is a gateway into all of your other um, material. Um, I, I just, 
I'm just really curious as to how you feel Quarantine Comics has, like you say, broken through for a, another audience and for a different audience. Do you, th do you feel your audience is different or um, is it very similar to the, the, the audience you had before? I mean, what's the demographic, do you feel, for Quarantine Comics? Because I think I could tell you it's everybody, but <laughs> that's the point. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, everyone's gone through quarantine. Sure. Um, well, maybe not New Zealand. They did quite well, didn't they? But, like, mo most people in the world have gone through uh, COVID in some way. So I guess my book is... Anyone could get something from it. Uh, and that was going to be the next question, because obviously uh, we're talking a worldwide uh, a world pandemic, world. and the audience did go worldwide. Um, I think it's safe to say um, the books that you um, published prior did have very much a UK audience. It was very much a, a, a Brit audience that was enjoying them. I mean, you had some international fans, yes. Quarantine Comics just... It just went worldwide. I think the, the, the UK audience for my first two books was mainly because it was just me <laughs> doing them. Like I self-published um, Wired Up Wrong and Stand In Your Power. I, um, yeah, I, I published those on Kickstarter. But um, they are getting a relaunch nope. soon. Yeah. Mm, exclusive news for you guys. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Um, and the reaction from that international audience then, uh, what, what was that like? Because um, the strips that you put, uh, I mean, they're, they're Brit-centric, um, as it were, and the, 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 the landscape that uh, you were drawing and put, uh, putting down on the page. But yeah, they, they talked to an international audience. So, I mean, what was the reaction from an inter international audience uh, to the book? Uh, what messages were you getting? It was 95% people saying, thank you so much, you're making me feel less alone, you're, I, I, I love these, like, um, you're talking about my life, like, get out of my head, that kind of stuff. There was 5% people being really angry with me. <laughs> Uh, okay, Which let's, was when let's, I knew I was famous because I was getting hate mail. That's when you know. Okay, you're let's. I, okay, let's talk about that. I mean, really? What yeah. kind of hate mail? What kind of comments were you getting? I mean, I don't want to say it. Yeah. Okay. Don't want to amplify it. Okay. Fair enough. Don't, but, yeah, they were horrible, but it's fine. Don't feed the trolls. Don't. Just don't. Fair it's enough. Fine. Fair enough. <laughs> um, there were times as well, I mean, it, a daily strip, it's um, one hell of a challenge. Like I say, when we're in the middle of a pandemic, when you've got all that, those stresses, um, and you were saying, like I say, it was a reason for you to get out of bed and do the strip. But there were moments and were days when you took a step back and just went, okay, I need a day. Um, how did that feel? Because I know that I've read some comments of yours where you just gone, you almost you felt you were letting an audience down at that point because they had achieved such a popularity that people were really wanting to see these strips. But then you had to take time for yourself. So yeah, how did how did how was that feeling? Um, I don't think I ever, and this is going to sound awful. I don't think I ever worried about my audience. I, because I, it, it started as this thing I was doing for me, and it always continued to be that. And it, I think, <laughs> I mean, in the book, at one point, I even think to myself, it's selfish for me to be doing these comics, and maybe I should stop. And uh, friendly talks me out of it. Don't worry. Don't even worry about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird thing, giving so much of yourself to everyone <laughs> on, online or oh, oh, anyone who wants to see it I suppose um, but I kept going just because it was keeping me sane and I've forgotten the question that Lena asked no, me that's, that's fine <laughs> I just kept rambling <laughs> you, yeah, that's fine um, the I mean there is a definite story but that is the story of your life throughout a pandemic there was um, obviously that real missing of Rob, uh, your other half. Um, 
but uh, you really talked about your time with your flatmate. How was your flatmate dealing with uh, the, the comic and how his representation was going out to the world? <laughs> oh, he really liked it. He <laughs> loved it. Whenever he was in a comic, I'd always show it him first and be like, is that okay? He'd be like, yeah, that's fine. But um, yeah, he's, no, Ian was great. He, he was a real rock <laughs> through <laughs> the, the lockdown. Um, yeah, and I think my, the book kind of represents him as that. As it paints someone. him in a pretty good light. Yeah. <laughs> it paints him. Um, and then, of course, there was that reunion uh, with Rob. Um, Spoilers. Uh, well, yeah, sorry. Uh, they, they get back together, everybody, um, just to, to let you know. Uh, you may have seen him at the table. Um, he's, he's out there. Um, and they're still together. Yay, big spoiler. Yeah, that's for the sequel. Crap, I've really spoiled it. Um, so... Yeah, what, how's Rob taken to it? Because uh, he was getting a real kind of window into your world, um, even beyond the FaceTime conversations that you were probably having. You, he was getting a real kind of sense of what you were like. and uh, Sorry, not what you were like, how, how you were um, during lockdown. Because you were putting it all out there, really. I was. I mean, I was t also telling him as well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I loved. Oh God, I think he's here. Is that Rob? Is he? Yeah, there Ladies he is. and gentlemen, Rob, everybody. <laughs> um, yes, uh, star of well, uh, co-star of Quarantine Comics. Uh, hello there. Sir. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be manning a table? Oh no, he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just left somebody else there to do it. Fantastic. Anyone who's interested in me is in this room, right? So. I think, yeah, there you go then. <laughs> um, so, obviously the, the book was, because uh, I want to get into a slightly broader topic of com uh, the um, autobiographical comics, because that is the title of the, the panel, but to kind of bring the, the story of quarantine comics to a close then, like I say, it was your agent that um, came to you uh, and said, okay, these need to be a book, these need to come together. Um, well, number one, what was your first reaction to that? And then number two, you, it was kind of like then signifying that there was going to be an end to this. It was that kind of... Because I know that the, the offer came in while the strip was ongoing, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so my agent said, these should be a book. And I, I said, that's a great idea. I <laughs> hadn't thought of that. Um, and then my agent found Ellen at Icon Books, and that was really nice. And she made it into these, and then this amazing book that's so beautiful. <clears throat> you can buy it from me today. Um, and um, yeah, I, I I kind of I wrote a prologue and an epilogue for for the book, and the epilogue kind of talks about how we're still very much in <laughs> this situation. Oh, bye, guy. Fine. Non. It's okay. We'll just kill them on the way out. Taken. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> just um, how I, I talk about how it's hard to be mad at a storm you're still inside of and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I. Um, when did you feel that there could be a a finite well a, a an end to the story as published? Because was it just a case of okay? This is where we are. This is the okay. Oh look, it's Friday. We'll publish that one, and that's it. That's the end one. <laughs> Had to go in for my dinner. I was done. No, um, we decided to do the first two hundred because that came to a nice end. I did carry on past that a little bit. I think I did maybe eighty-five or something comics past that. But the book collects the first two hundred, and there, it is a nice sort of story arc. Um, I kind of just carried on because I didn't know what else to do with myself. <laughs> Which kind of like then brings on to the next question because it did come to a close. You did just decide, did. okay, I've told my story. I've told what I can with Quarantine Comics. When you did that final page, what did you know already that was going to be the last one or did you just go, okay, I think I've told my story now. I've... It was the last one for a while. Yeah. I didn't start again for a little while, I can't remember how long, a couple of months or something, and then I started up again just because I had feelings. <laughs> I had things I wanted to say. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I, I started again. Um, no, that's it. <laughs> okay. So does that imply a quarantine comics too? I've thought about this. I don't, I, I don't think so. Okay. I, do, I don't think so. It just exists as its online mm. Um, mm. iteration. That's I good. I think so. And then the reception, obviously, um, fame, glory, yada, yada, yada. Um, awards. Uh, I was, like I say, I was down at the uh, Cartoon Museum um, a week or so ago for the Tripwire Awards, uh, where we awarded best comics, uh, did best digital comics uh, to Rachel. And thankfully, she was in the room, and that was a moment uh, because she thought she was going to lose to Roger Langstridge, and she didn't. And she, uh, her and her friends squealed, and it was rather fun. Um, <laughs> You've been, uh, can you explain how the US interview happened? Because <laughs> you got interviewed, was it for like a, a, an American breakfast television show or it something? It was like this morning, but in America. And they wanted me to go talk about my book. And it was, yeah, it was really nice. Um, I can imagine that the... was slightly surreal, really. <laughs> Very surreal. Um, yeah, one of the uh, presenters is a fan of mine and got me on the, the show. It was, it was mental. My life is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it was very fun. <laughs> if you go on my Twitter, it's the pinned tweet if you want to go and look at the interview. It's very... You pinned it? I, didn't, I, I, pinned I hadn't it. actually noticed that. I pinned okay, it. Of course I pinned enough. it. It's the most amazing thing that's ever happened <laughs> to me. Wow. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So let's talk about... Um, autobiographical comics, which ones do you read? Uh, I mean, you've talked about the influences, you've talked about the ones that uh, kind of got you into doing autobiographical comics. Which ones do you read now? Do you, is there any that kind of like, you know, are on your reading list, as it were? Uh, there are, but I can't remember their names now. Um, Nothing like being under a spotlight, is there? Sorry know, about that. right? God. Um, I do love Kate Beaton's she, I know that's who I said before, but she is doing the odd one, the odd um, autobiographical comic about her new baby, and it's so nice, so sweet. Um, and also, I said this, I said her before as well, but Kate Leth is doing autobiographical comics as well, just about like I don't know, um, she's doing them about skating and being engaged, and it's just really nice. Um, yeah, Kate Leth, Kate Beaton follow them, they're amazing, they're great. And what other um, kind of illustrators, other than autobiographical, I mean, what other comics do you read, just out of curiosity? Um, I've gone on a what, big... What, what time do you have to do, read them? But, yeah, what, what comics do you read? Um, I've gone on a big Lucy Nisley kick recently. Um, her kind of comics about being pregnant and growing up and stuff like that just life life stuff um and uh yeah i've been rereading emmy lennox and um yeah all of her autobio stuff it's so nice um what did i read the other day i read i reread um this one summer um by I, I can't remember either. Um, <laughs> but this one summer, it's such a good book. It's, yeah, um, you can almost step into those pages and go to the beach. It's so nice. Um, but, yeah. Been... And uh, the, like I said, you're keeping busy. Um, there's non-autobiographical stuff that you're doing at the moment, um, if you can talk about those. What books are you currently working on? What projects have you got on the, uh, on the cards? So I've got um, uh, The Queen's Favourite Witch... Wait, no. <laughs> um, yeah, The Queen's Favourite Witch is coming out um, this autumn, uh, which I've drawn and Ben Dixon has, um, has written and what else have I got coming out? I've got Good Game Well Played coming out this autumn as well, which I've written and not drawn, drawn by um, Catherine Lobo, who's amazing. And every time I see her pages, they make me cry because they're so good. Um, how, do, how does that feel to kind of have someone else take 
your work, con oh, your words, considering that you have had that career of you know, sort of like illustrating your own uh, pieces. How has it been to kind of take someone else on board to take that element of your voice? Every time she sends me a page, it's like getting a gift. It's so nice. It's so nice. She's made my character so real. Like, I, yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah. No, it's great. Um, please, please buy Good Game Well Played by Maverick Publishing. <laughs> it's so good. Um, we are going to ask uh, for if there's any questions from the audience because I do want to get uh, anything from you guys that you want to put to Rachel that maybe I haven't touched on. Um, but uh, before we do that, uh, I'll give you a bit of time to think about that uh, as I ask. Um, so you've got these forthcoming projects, um, but the autobiographical is certainly where people uh, connect with you the most and it's what they enjoy, I feel, the most from what you do. Um, autobiographical books coming down the line, anything that you feel that you want to say at this point? Is there anything that you want to continue to, to put out there? Well, like I say, um, Wired Up Wrong and Stand In Your Power are going to have a, a re -launch. A relaunch, yeah. Yeah, um, so they're going to get launched like uh, in more countries and stuff uh, more than I can just you know because I'm just one girl putting books in jiffy bags in my living room so I've actually got some publishers that want to ship them around the world and that's amazing um, but otherwise I don't know no, no, I, 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 use I, any I, new ideas for perhaps uh, an ongoing there's going to be a third book oh right okay so there's excellent. Gonna, excellent there's going to be wide up wrong standing your power and a third book so it's going to be a trilogy Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And have you got a, a kind of date or time when you're thinking that that could happen? No. No. <laughs> so this uh, ongoing trilogy could on go for quite a little while. But I'm still working on that. Still working on it. That's fine. Uh, any, any time that you take to uh, put on the project, that's great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if we uh, turn to the audience, I don't know if we've got any uh, lights we can just turn up a little bit so we can just see uh, who's uh, out there. But if anybody has any questions for Rachel, anything that we haven't uh, covered, anything that perhaps uh, someone, uh, any burning question that you would like to put to Rachel at all, I'm going to put this uh, to yourself. We've got somebody over there. Uh, we've got uh, someone uh, with a microphone who's going to come to you now. Go for it. It's all yours. Hi. Um so I'm aware that you write and you obviously draw as well. How do you structure your comic panels? Um, do you do like the writing first or do you have like a vision of how um, creatively you want it to, to look before you start doing it? So like how do I put my pages together, you yeah. mean? Like yeah, sorry, I didn't work. And, no, it's and, fine. And, and, and timings, I guess, the, the, the beats and the way that, yeah. So I... Uh, uh, for quarantine comics, it was kind of, uh, if I got up to seven panels, that would be too many. Like, um, I had to be quite, um, brevity was key with those, because I, I kind of gave myself the rule that they had to fit on a A4 piece of paper. Um, so it was usually four panels, and the third panel would usually be the kind of beat of the comedy. Um, but if we're talking about normal comic pages um, for like a, a, a story, I would usually limit myself to nine panels. I'm trying to look at you, but I've no idea where you are. There you are. Um, <laughs> I would usually limit myself to nine panels. Um, and if I've, I'm going over nine panels, it, it was a bit, it would, I was trying to say too much in one page. Um, how, how big a Wa Bill Waterson fan are you, just out of curiosity? Do you know who Bill Waterson <laughs> is? I do. I'm a very big fan, yes. Just checking, because <laughs> there's, I, I, there's a definite sense to the beats and the timings of mm. some of your jokes as well. Uh, there's a definite Calvin and Hobbes kind of, the, that bang, bang, boom. And, then I yeah. Still, yeah. I, and I think you do have to be aware of that. You have to then read your your page back and see what's where your eyes going and I don't know there's so many things to think about with comics um, we really should get paid more 
But um, yeah, uh, if I'm doing more than nine panels, that's usually too many, and I need to. Re unless you unless you want to make your reader feel really claustrophobic, then you could put loads of panels, like like and make them feel very. Yeah, trapped. What made you decide on the panel shapes? Because you went for the lenticular um, uh, strips. Uh, I mean, when everyone uh, or anyone thinks of kind of traditional four-beat uh, panels, uh, it's, you're kind of going for the newspaper strip kind of uh, you know, the layout. What made you go for the uh, lenticular? Well, it, was it just being a child of the internet and the, the scrolling? Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a natural way that you've just decided to do them. I guess I, I like panels that are like this way around rather than like portrait. I like that. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, no, this is where we're just analysing your work now. Good God, we're just tearing it apart. Okay, we have a question uh, there, sir. Yeah, take it away. What advice have you got for me for autobiographical comics? Advice. Advice for starting your, your own. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, start now. Like, make a comic about today, about how you felt about coming to a Comic-Con and, and, and stuff. Everything can be content. Um, you can find something interesting in every day. <laughs> you can make a comic about every day. She, she, she used that um, word. She, content makes me content. Oh, makes me cringe, man. Oh, but. hey, Le hey, Leonard, what? this is content. <laughs> Jesus, hi there, interwebs. Um, hmm. uh, yes, <laughs> I would. Hang on, I'm not done. I I would start now, and I would start small. Make a, a zine about the past fortnight that you've had. I don't know, or you know, just just go for it, and it's great, and it's you can get your comics printed by like um, your local printer. Get like 20 done or something do you, and staple do you, them yourself. Do you feel like, getting them printed is important? No, I mean, can the oh, internet be yes, the real, course. can it be the, the, the final product, would you say? Not necessarily, yeah. That's me speaking as an old woman. You can just put them on Webtoon or, or TikTok or I don't know, what, any of those websites, but... Yeah, getting them printed isn't important anymore, I guess. Are you wanting a breath mint? I've got some TikToks in my pocket. <laughs> Sorry, I'm old as well. So <laughs> there we go. Um, any other questions? I, I know that we have, oh, we have somebody down here. Hello there. Have you had a good day? Have you, uh, in, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, really. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Go for it. It gives you a question. Um, I just wanted to say hi because I saw you at the uh, cathedral just now, but then I think you were here. Bye. Amazing. I just wanted to ask, because like autobiographical comic is like different from the you know like story comics you see on webtoons and stuff. I just I was just wondering like how do you put like your ideas into the comics in terms of like do you just like because it's essentially a diary right because it's about your daily life. Do you just start drawing or like do you like write it down first like or oh, what happened today and then then turn that into drawings or like oh, I saw this today, and just start drawing or sketching out first. Um, so usually with the quarantine comics, I would write like a sentence about what the comic was going to be about, and I'd remember. Yeah, I'd remember that. Um, yeah, and then I'd kind of work that into a, a punchline, kind of. That was going to be my next question. Did it always have to feel like it had to head for a gag? For yourself as a comic creator? Because obviously as comics, you know, it's great to, you know, the, the, the humor comics obviously are a, a, a strong proponent of the, the art form. But did you, did you feel that even the, some of the stronger, darker, more challenging moments, you had to go for the gag? What do you, what, what do you think about that? I kind of, when they started to get um, an audience, I kind of did feel like I needed to be funny all the time, but I, I, I wasn't. <laughs> did, you thought, did you find that? Was it a deliberate...? Um, I mean, 
I did feel the pressure, but I didn't listen to it because I kind of wanted to explain how I was feeling through this time, which was very up and down, and sometimes I was very down. <laughs> um, so I wanted to tell that in my story. Um, so yeah, sometimes there are comics that are just a bit sad, and because I was just quite sad, and I think, but that's, I mean, if you're doing autobio comics, you need to be honest about how you're feeling, otherwise what the, f how are you doing? I, I, mean, said I, think, I think it speaks volumes about Rachel's uh, temperament that uh, even throughout all this, she's been smiling and she's been giggling. Um, and I, yeah, I, I know I say I went, she went for the gag, but I think that was just more of, there was a, a real se a sense of even positivity in the stronger, darker moments. I think that there's, there was a sense of optimism and I think that's what people really gravitated towards. So that was, that was for myself. Um, I think we've got time maybe for one, one or two more questions. We have somebody at the back there, and this is where... Oh, yes. I'm just going to get you going all over the place, mate. <laughs> I'm going to go to somebody over here next, and so yeah. Go for Hi. it. Hi. Um, so I have been reading your comics for the past year, and I'm a big fan. Oh. But I also saw, besides your Instagram account, your um, blog portfolio, and I was wondering, between storyboards, uh, comics, character designs, which one is your favorite? Or which one is easier to do? Or <laughs> oh no, that's a totally fun. different question. <laughs> which is your favorite and which is the easiest? Good grief. So Go for it. I, um, I would always prefer comics. Um, and that is my bread and butter, which I'm very privileged to, um, to, to have as a job. Um, I get the odd storyboarding job now and again, and I actually really like that as kind of a, a, a change in pace <laughs> from comics. Um, but yeah, I would, I would pick comics as easiest, and what was the other one? Um, well, like, yeah, it was, um, I think it was the, the, the one you enjoyed most and which was oh, the easiest. Easy. Yeah, easiest and I enjoy it most. Oh, well, not easiest. I do, I do have a hard time sometimes doing comics. <laughs> but yeah, my, my favourite is doing comics. <laughs> um, we're talking about your blog there as well, and I might as well quit, you know, get this in, and I don't know if I should have included this earlier. Um, you, when you put Quarantine Comics out, you put it out on multiple platforms. You went Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Why did you feel it was necessary to put it all out onto multiple platforms and why not focus on one? Because, I mean, I think the usual s social media lesson is pick one, focus on that, and kind of, like, let everyone focus on that. What, why, why the multiple platforms? I didn't know what I was doing. And there you go. That's, yeah. uh, you see, we're all learning. We're all kind of picking this up as we go. And I think that's one of the, <laughs> the great lessons from Rachel's uh, stories and great Rachel's books. Um, I am so looking forward to this third book in the trilogy. That's going to that's gonna rock. Um, and, of course, uh, the Queen's... Uh, Queen's Favourite Witch. Cra Queen's Favourite Witch, which is on the way. Um, ladies and gentlemen... If you've read Quarantine Comics uh, and you've enjoyed it, I want you to make a lot of noise, please, for Rachel Smith. Thank you very much indeed.